Well, relationship, Jesus Christ, all about relationship, and he desires the same for us today. Relationship with families, relationship with one another. Ohio man Rob Yannick has a new appreciation for relationship these days, not only his relationship with his earthly family, but also that with his heavenly father. Just the fact that he's alive today here on earth and has been given more time to build relationships with family and friends is a fact that he treasures greatly. John Ondo has this incredible story. Fear. It's an emotion that many men typically never admit to. Like many men, Robert Yannick chose to hide this secret from his family and friends, despite it being something he fought with his whole life. I didn't play football because I was afraid of getting hit. I didn't play baseball because I was afraid of getting hit by the ball. I was afraid my whole life. Even having dedicated his life to Christ many years ago, Robert still feared even sharing his faith with others. I, I don't want to tell people about the Lord because uh, they may ridicule me, they may make fun of me or something like that. Or yeah, Bob, we know that, we know that. Now 68 years old and married to his wife Diane for 45 years, Robert was about to face fear head on. It all began last year as Robert began to have extreme cases of acid reflux. However, his wife was worried that something more critical was going on. The last year he was in his usual energetic self. Uh, periodically I'd ask him if I could make an appointment for a doctor and he would always turn me down. I thought this was old age, this is part of getting old but I found out differently. On the night of December 5th, he couldn't take the pain in his chest any longer. He woke me up at two o'clock in the morning and he says, I think you're gonna have to take me to the hospital. I think I'm having a heart attack. First, Robert and Diane traveled to the small hospital near their hometown. Well, I'm watching the heart monitor and it's sporadic, it's, it's going nuts. And then they come back and says, yes, you had a heart attack. They transferred Robert to a larger hospital in nearby Steubenville, where the doctors had a more detailed reaction to Robert's condition. And the doctor says, threw his hands up, and he says, I don't know how the man's still alive. He says, it's a miracle of God. Those were his words, it's a miracle of God. And he says, and he showed me the, the all the blockages. I had 100% blockage on one side of my heart, and 99% blockage on the other. Robert would undergo a five-hour procedure, a quintuple bypass to repair the damage. However, after the doctors successfully removed the blockages, they were concerned about his heart rhythm. Doctor came in, had the family come in, and he told us there was a problem with the one side of his heart wasn't beating right. So he said, we want to send him to Pittsburgh. For a man who had lived in fear of injury, doctors, and confrontation his whole life, it was on the trip to the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center that Robert says that his fears were taken from him in a dramatic way. I'm going to tell you this. It seemed like the Lord put his hand on me. He gave me peace. I'm sorry. Sorry. He gave me peace. He says, I felt we're going to take care of this, Bob. We're going to take care of this. We're with you. And I had faith that he was. In Pittsburgh, following more procedures, Robert appeared to be on the road to recovery, alert, and even feeling strong enough to call family members from his hospital bed. And all of a sudden, I noticed the phone drop out of his hands, and he looked like he was trying to get out of the bed. He falls back across the bed, and his eyes was set. His eyes was open, and they were set. Someone came and got me, and I says, is he dead? And during this time, a code blue was issued. Robert's heart had stopped. I called Robbie. I says, uh, pray your dad's Cody. Robert would be rushed to emergency surgery. Diane would be left by herself in a waiting room. But I had to surrender him to the Lord and totally trust him. And I just waited. Well, when the doctor came in, he sat down, took my hand, and I thought, he didn't make it. But he did. Robert made a miraculous recovery, and he gives the credit to prayer. If you ever think prayers don't work, you're wrong. Prayers do work. I'm here today because of that, in the grace of God, 
I, because the Lord heard the prayers. I'm here today because of it. Robert now has a strong heart with the help of a pacemaker and a defibrillator. However, the real change in his heart is that he no longer hides in fear after being given a second chance at life. I have told more people about what has happened, what the Lord has done for me, the last six months than I did in 60 years. He is more bold, more bold, more open about talking about the Lord. The Lord, Jesus and I have something in common. He died and rose in three days. I died and arose in 10 minutes, basically. He died for the salvation of mankind. I died to show mankind what God can do because of His grace. I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that.